October is Stuttering Awareness Month, and I'm a person who stutters. My stutter is moderate, and while I'm fluent now, you will hear when my stutter was more severe. I think it's really important for everyone to listen to understand what it's like to be a person who stutters. As uncomfortable as it is for you to listen to this, think about how uncomfortable it is to be the person trying to speak. My name is Shelly and I'm a Psychor MVP and Pluralsight author and today I'm going to react to my very first attempts at making videos. First video I ever tried to do was for Psychor Adaptive Print Studio in 2014. It didn't go well. So in the code behind, let's have a look at what the code actually does. So if you look at the using statements to start, there are two using statements that are your main... I'm just going to pause it for a second. I think it's important to note here that I stutter. And at the time I was recording this, I was having health problems and I was taking prednisone. Um, one of the side effects of that is stuttering. So my stutter is generally moderate. It usually isn't a problem. You know, I, I, um, I have pretty good control at this point, but during this time in my life, I just couldn't really control it, which is why you hear a lot of the pausing and um, repetitions, and I sound very prescribed. I sound very scripted, like I'm reading off a script. I'm always reading off of a script, actually. That's still true now. Statements for print experience. I always have problems with M's Management. or any consonant where you they close your mouth. Sitecore Print Studio Publishing Engine and Sitecore Print Studio Publishing Engine. Publishing. You can hear that I'm over enunciating everything because I'm trying so hard not to stutter. For the project path in the site core content tree. Next, I am getting... So a pro tip for anybody who's doing item. training and recording yes, their code. Don't do this. Don't highlight the code with your cursor. Use Camtasia's highlighting um, tool after it's recorded. It'll be so much easier to read. PDF. Next up I have the print options. Now print options are a are print options are used by the print you can hear here I'm just I'm unraveling class. They set your options. When I recorded this, I remember thinking that through the magic of editing, that. somehow this would sound okay, but it was never published. Print options, take two. So, Print options are parameters that are used by the print. You can hear here, I'm getting really frustrated. I'm just so mad that I can't do this. When a couple months before this, before I was sick, I wouldn't have had a problem talking into a microphone. JPEG or Flash. The next option I have is 
results file name and that is simply the name of the PDF and the last option I have here is use high res and that is telling the print manager class it's very rare that I do repetition type stuttering my my stutter is generally more blocking and pausing um, and facial tics those are fun images versus the low res there's no amount of editing that could have ever made that Next, sound okay I have the print manager this uses sorry the print manager big One breath minute. trying to calm myself down trying to get the print manager control back accepts two parameters the database and language then I have the um, string result that is the result from the print manager print method and then here I have some code that takes the result and uses the response to display the PDF to the user. A lot of pauses and blocks and there. It. If we go back to... I remember it was really website. hard to and keep my composure. Holiday because I knew I that someone I was managing on my team would have to edit this and hear this. Holiday here. Scroll down. Click print. Open that up. As you can see, it's still printing the battle of the hills item that is a problem that we will now fix so if you worked with me during that time, this is pretty much how I sounded all the time. Um, again, like I just, I couldn't control my um, stuttering and it was, it was really hard and humiliating, honestly. Um, this was just the start of my health problems that continued for many years afterwards and clearly I'm okay now but this this time in my life wasn't wasn't great so after that disaster I did not try to do another video again until 2017 so by that time I my speech was a little bit better I still wasn't um, in control hundred percent but this was for a series of videos I did on YouTube to teach the fundamentals of web development.
Hello world, my name is Shelly and this is a crash course. So by this time I was doing something weird with my voice where it was like high pitch and I was trying to sound excited because I had noticed on YouTube um, whenever I watched a um, YouTube star's first stuff to their current stuff, you can hear their voice, their performance changed over time and and I was also, at this point, I was watching a lot of Stampy Cat, <laughs> he has a very high-pitched voice and he's um, excitable, so I thought that that would be a good way to go, but it's a little... That means that you are I don't know. Favorite type of person, which is someone who has it just doesn't work for me anymore. <laughs> and wants to learn. Just in case you haven't met me before through my other courses, my name is Shelly and I have many That picture there is from Rome as well as when I hosted the Sitecore Training Summit the or whatever. That was one of the best times in my career. Definitely, if that was pre-illness. Look at the old Floral Site logo. <laughs> This free funny. crash course is for beginners and no programming experience. So is all of this work In with this the course, cartoons and the, the animation basics, was done by my husband Jason, who's currently behind the camera examples. filming this, I do teach and a he produces all my courses. Um, he web directs my performance as well, and he helps me come up with my that you can overall performance what voice, I to do with this but the tool that is to he used to make this was called Powtoons. For people who just want to get their feet wet with web dev in general. There is a course manual that you can download for free, and it includes all of the code examples and descriptions from these video tutorials. You can download it by going to hofstech.com slash webdev and that manual still exists also get a at that version on Amazon. url if you are new to this channel please click so the i'll pause it there one of the um main comments on that video was where's the lesson <laughs> because it at this time youtube only let you upload a certain um a video with a certain time limit. So I split this course into three or four parts, I think. And the first intro part had a lot of views and then the others did not because people didn't understand that the next video was next in the playlist. That's definitely something that I would change now. So the next thing I did was I created a course on Udemy it was a intro to ASP.NET MVC Azure, I think, and let's watch. <laughs> Hello and welcome. In this course, you will learn how oh, I to was build right a up on the microphone Microsoft in this Azure one. .NET website. <laughs> the music is Shelley, from and I will OC be Remix. Your instructor. It is clearly I have over the theme for Super Mario Brothers. I have of experience Brothers. in the tech industry. I'm aging myself just a little bit by saying that, but I have also trained students and trainers from all around the globe. I have managed global training programs, studied instructional design, and acted as I'm a still doing the sort architect of and sing-songy voice here. But now it, let's have a look it's at what you're going to learn in this course. One. This one's not actually then, bad. We will sign up for a free Microsoft Azure account, create a website using a pre existing Visual Studio template, apply a theme, add a page, I feel and like publish it to Microsoft Azure. Background was Finally, something we will talk about it was an asset that I got and from Camtasia. And, and remember to enjoy your learning experience and have fun because if you're not having fun, what's the point? I remember that. If you're not having fun, what's the point? That was something that I put in there. So one of the reasons that my speech is a lot smoother here is because I worked out the fact that I needed to be scripted 100%. I, I can't do, I can't manage doing the screen and the words at the same time. It's still that way. So 
what I did here was I recorded one line of audio at a time, like different files even. And I would repeat the line over and over and over, sometimes 20 times until I had the muscle memory so that I didn't stutter. But I could only achieve that one line at a time. And looking back on that, that was actually part of my healing process. That was speech therapy for me to help me reacclimate myself to my regular fluency. So I think that that really helped. But after this um, was produced and published on Udemy, Microsoft came out with free training. And then later on, Microsoft partnered with Pluralsight to do their, you know, to publish all of their training there. And the sales from this course, of course, plummeted. So the next one is my Pluralsight audition. This, I was so afraid. I really, really wanted to become a Pluralsight author. I knew that they were really selective. I needed a source of passive income. I had lost so many jobs because of my stutter and other things. I just wasn't in the right mental space to uh, perform really well. So I tried out for Pluralsight. I contacted them and I was connected to a acquisitions editor and he talked to me about the whole process and this was my audition. Hello there, my name is Shelly and in this video we will write an Ajax call using jQuery and MVC. For this one, I returned to the high-pitched voice. So this one again, I recorded one line at a time. I, I, not, I don't remember when I stopped doing that, but at some point I was able to start to actually read a paragraph and then I was able to read you know, a couple paragraphs YouTube, until now, I can pretty much read the whole jQuery script without any problems. So maybe I should try doing the talking the at the same time Ajax as the screen stuff, which would compatible. really speed up the production process. Well, or JSON from a remote server using both HTTP GET and HTTP POST. HTTP I had so much trouble saying data, HTTP get HTTP and HTTP post. I, I remember in lesson, sitting in the office and saying those words over and over Jason until they lost all meaning. See here, I had learned the highlight the technique. Instead of highlighting with your mouse, Ajax you highlight with the Camtasia the highlighter. It's amazing how this sounds like I'm reading it all at once. This was literally, HTML I recorded one line, really line at a time up, and then edited it together. This was before my husband started to um, in our sit in on my sessions. I remember trying to figure out if I should say routes or routes, and I chose routes and just went with it. But kind of in everyday speaking, I see routes. It's funny to see these old plural site slides too. They request that in your audition you have to use their slides. And spoiler alert: I did become a plural site author and I've been a plural site author since 2016 so I've seen their PowerPoint templates and their overall um, designs change drastically over the years. In the home controller let's create our action public JSON result send result. All we are going to do in this action is return a JSON string using the JSON method and specifying JSON request behavior allow get. That's all we need to do. Wasn't that simple? Let's debug and that test That was our simple. One of the things that I learned over the years was to not say that something is simple. Because if anybody's button, watching it right and they're having a hard time, you're you going to make them feel stupid. The so. Nothing is simple. I'm teaching these things because people 
need to learn. I also stopped teaching on these like static websites that are literally the out of the box look. Now let's go one step further Training's a lot more interesting when there's a story behind it that people can relate to. And when people can relate to something they're building, then you really have something special. They'll remember what you taught so much more than if they're building a static site. I think that my performance here is a little rushed. It's, it's just one, one thing to the next thing. There's not a lot of explanation of what we just did. And I'm also still, I'm highlighting with the cursor sometimes, but other times I'm using the highlighter. And sometimes the highlighter, it could be cleaned up a little bit. It could be just a little bit closer to the actual line and not overlap anything above or below it. This looks much better. In the real world, chances are you will that line. This looks much better. I said it probably five different ways. I, I remember saying, "This looks much better. This looks much better." <laughs> it's just part of the process. And our old outro that had nothing. That one was fun. I wasn't sure that Pluralsight would accept me. I wasn't sure if my performance was good enough or how I um, wrote the overall presentation, if it was too short, too long, if I explained things enough. But what they're really looking for is someone who can perform something within 10 minutes and it will just teach one thing. If you try to cram too much into a video, then it'll never work. You need to get to the root of the problem, get to the specific instructions for how to do things, don't spend time making mistakes and then fixing them on camera in your video. Make sure that everything flows nicely and is concise. So the last one that I'll watch, I haven't seen any of these in a long time, but especially this one. This was my very first Pluralsight course, Tactics and Tools for Troubleshooting Front-End Web Development. Really rolls off the tongue. And this came out in 2016. And ever since then, I've published about two courses per year. Don't cut that out. That stutter. That's me. That's just how I am. Hi everyone. My name is Shelley Benhoff and welcome to my You can hear here that I've drastically reduced the pitch of my voice so that it's more natural. In today's world, there are so many different devices. Oh uh, yeah, this, this course, I created a fake convention website, which anybody that's seen my latest courses on Sitecore, I'm still doing the same thing. But this course was more, it was a um, nerd convention instead. My latest courses feature a Sitecore fake SiteCon convention. It's really interesting. After after I published this, I didn't really do any more front-end work ever again. I hope that you'll join me on this journey to learn how to troubleshoot any front-end web development issue with the Tactics and Tools for Troubleshooting Front-End Web Development course here at Pluralsight. I remember having to say the name of that course over and over until I could say it in one, one breath. It was very difficult for me. The T sound is one that you bring your teeth together. And if you think about your tongue placement there, your tongue has to be just gently at the roof of your mouth. These are things I think of every time I talk. So I'm exhausted most of the time, but Overall, that was really good. That one 
I, I haven't really changed my overall um, presentation too much. I think that I'm way more comfortable in front of a microphone now. And I'm, I'm really proud of where I came from. That first video was excruciating to listen to, and I know it's excruciating for people who don't stutter to have the patience to not jump in and try to finish my sentences or get impatient and tell me that, you know, I, I need to talk faster. Yes, I know. You know, that's not, I just can't sometimes. So, so that's it. That's where I started. That was six years of my life six years of struggle and some success, sometimes not, I would really suggest that anybody that's interested in doing videos of any kind don't not do them. Just get past the fear. Get past whatever's holding you back. For me, there was a lot holding me back but I needed work. A lot of what I've done here was out of necessity. It was just out of needing to have something in case I lost a job between 2014 and 2017. I think I lost six jobs. It was a very turbulent time in my life. I wasn't always in the best place to look for work anyway, but through Pluralsight, I was really able to dig myself out of that hole. I've met amazing people. I've met a lot of the authors who I've looked up to for years and years are now coming to me and asking me questions, and it's been the best journey I've ever taken. If you want to watch any of the videos that I showed here that are actually published, a couple of them aren't, the links to everything are down below, and I wish you all a wonderful day.